Cheetah Hunt is arguably the most popular operating attraction at Busch Gardens Tampa, but that sentiment isn't shared by most enthusiasts. Many coaster enthusiasts have deemed Cheetah Hunt a family coaster, but is that really fair? This coaster reaches speeds of 60 miles per hour or 97 kilometers per hour and includes a variety of elements including a Heartline roll. That does not sound like a family coaster to me. Now everyone has been raving about Islands of Adventures of Velocicoaster coaster as of late and rightfully so. But in this video, I wanted to review Florida's original Intamin multi-launch coaster in Cheetah Hunt. Disney has several attractions that were inspired by the Star Wars IP, but Cheetah Hunt was also inspired by Star Wars. Mark Rose, Vice President of Design Engineering at Busch Gardens when Cheetah Hunt was developed, revealed the original concept for the coaster was developed after he had watched Star Wars Return of the Jedi. He was inspired by the speeder bike scenes on Endor when they zoomed close to the ground and whizzed over, under, and past trees. And that motion is pretty much what Cheetah Hunt does. Outside of the 102 foot or 31 meter tall windcatcher tower towards the start of the ride, almost the entirety of Cheetah Hunt hugs the ground. Further, the coaster slaloms past rock work, jumps over the sky ride, dives under pathways, and zips past animal enclosures. The journey consists of an endless series of head choppers and near misses. As a result, the coaster looks fantastic off-ride. The close interactions to the midway build anticipation, and the green track makes the ride blend in naturally with the grass and trees. These visuals are the biggest strength of Cheetah Hunt as you wind your way through the park. This coaster was designed specifically for Busch Gardens Tampa Bay, which is why I found it quite surprising that Happy Valley Nanjing opened a near clone of Cheetah Hunt late in 2020 in light of revenge. But back to Cheetah Hunt. This coaster opened in 2011 as part of a refresh to the Crown Colony Plaza section of the park. This was also accompanied by the Cheetah Run attraction, where Busch Gardens will have cheetahs race after an object at predetermined times. And I love how this exhibit is parallel to Cheetah Hunt's launch track, so both the animal and coaster can reach their top speed concurrently if you're lucky. The ride was originally going to be named Cheetaka, but Busch Gardens decided that that name was too difficult to pronounce and didn't properly describe the ride. The station and queue building is shared with the Sky Ride, but the line itself doesn't really have any theming, which is unfortunate because you'll likely be in this queue line for a while. Even on a relatively quiet day, this ride usually has a 30 to 45 minute wait, and on busy days, the line can easily be twice that. Part of it is the ride's immense popularity, but part of it is also the ride's capacity. Cheetah Hunt has a dual load platform, and on busy days, they'll use both platforms and four trains. However, if you go on a less busy day, it's possible they'll only be using two trains in one side of the platform. If you don't have quick queue, you may want to head to this ride immediately if you can beat the morning rush there. Otherwise, you're better off waiting until the line starts to die down in the mid-afternoon because this is the closest coaster to the main entrance. If you want the front, you'll likely have to wait a few extra trains once you reach the platform, but that is the best row for the visuals. Overall, I slightly prefer the back though because the forces are a bit better back there. Cheetah Hunt's trains look fantastic. They are themed to look like cheetahs with their color palette, markings, and profiling. The one downside with the trains are the restraints. Cheetah Hunt has hard over the shoulder restraints identical to the ones found in King Ka. Since Cheetah Hunt is a very smooth ride, they don't cause any head banging. They just aren't as freeing as the lap bars you find in Intamin's newer coasters, such as the aforementioned Velocicoaster. Once dispatched, you immediately hit the first of three launches. This linear synchronous motor, or LSM launch, makes an intimidating whooshing sound as you accelerate to a relatively modest 30 miles per hour, or 48 kilometers per hour. The launch has a little pep to it, but it's just the warm up. You then meekly round a turn, feeling like you'll stall out, and then you drop down into a trench where you hit the ride's second launch, which accelerates you to the ride's top speed of 60 miles per hour. This launch doesn't have much oomph at the start, but you do get a decent kick towards the end of it. And then you sharply rise up the Windcatcher Tower. The base of this ascent gives a rapid dose of positive Gs, but even better are the negative Gs at the top. The top of the hill is ridiculously sharp, so those up front get some decent ejector airtime, while those in the back still manage to get some weak floater airtime. The figure eight turn atop the Windcatcher Tower 
is extremely slow and forceless, but the visuals are wonderful. You get a prolonged bird's eye view of the park, and then you plunge down into another trench. Like the ascent, this 130 foot or 40 meter drop is very steep. So it offers some strong sustained ejector airtime for those in the back, and even some weak floater airtime for those up front. You then zoom through a corrugated steel trench, which aesthetically doesn't look the best because it doesn't have any theming like the trenches on Montu, but it does accentuate the ride's speed and includes some head choppers. When you emerge, you navigate this giant S-hill over the sky ride. While the element is picturesque, it's a bit too tall and drawn out to offer any airtime. At best, you may get a really weak pop of floater airtime in the back when the ride is fully warmed up. After diving under a pathway, you twist up into the ride's lone inversion, a heartline roll. You take this element with a lot less speed than you expect, which works to the ride's advantage as the element delivers a few seconds of glorious hang time. The inversion transitions into a mid-course brake run, which does slow the train down a decent amount. The next section of the ride is completely hidden from guests' eyes, as Cheetah Hunt weaves its way through a rocky gorge that was previously part of Rhino Rally. The drop in this section has some zip to it, and then you traverse a series of S-bends. This slalom course through the rocks is a nice visual, and the undulations, while slow, offer a few bursts of laterals. Originally, this section took place above a pool of water, but on all my Cheetah Hunt rides, it has always been drained. Have I just been unlucky, or is this section rarely or never filled now? After this section, you hit the ride's final launch, which accelerates you to 40 miles per hour or 64 kilometers per hour. While the final launch doesn't offer much in terms of force, I was still surprised the top speed was just that low when I looked at the stats. That leads into a camelback that offers some good floater airtime up front and weak sustained ejector airtime in the back. You then twist over an S-hill that starts and ends in animal exhibits. Visually, this element is more exciting off-ride because you pass through the exhibits too quickly on-ride to register what just happened. The S-hill itself offers just a weak pop of airtime across all rows. After breezing through one last final trench, you navigate yet another S-hill. This one is really elongated, so it offers absolutely no airtime. But the tight twist out of it does deliver a burst of positive G's and laterals. You then hop up into the brake run, ending the 4,429 foot or 1,350 meter long steel coaster. If you look at Cheetah Hunt purely in terms of forces, it definitely is pacing issues. Between the paws atop the Windcatcher Tower and some of the S Hills, Cheetah Hunt just does not have the same breakneck pacing and intensity as the other Intamin Blitz coasters. Every time Cheetah Hunt offered a really good element, it would take its foot off the gas for the next element. But the visuals definitely help compensate, as it really does feel like you're on the prowl through the jungle. And the coaster does have some great elements mixed in, such as the ascent and descent from the tower, the heartline roll, and the camelback. So what would I rate Cheetah Hunt? I would give this coaster a 7 out of 10. It is a good ride for sure. Visually, it is a very impressive coaster with how it's integrated into the park. However, I did come off the attraction wanting a little bit more in the force department, and I found the pacing to be uneven throughout the ride, even with the enhanced visuals. Still, it is a super rideable coaster because of the smoothness and the fact it contrasts nicely with the park's B&M loopers that really pile on the positive Gs. So those are my thoughts on Cheetah Hunt, the Intamin multi-launch coaster at Busch Gardens Tampa. Have you been on Cheetah Hunt? What are your thoughts on this coaster? I would love to hear what you think about it down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and music park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.